June 28th. Wow! We are halfway through 2023 and we have all witnessed by now the incredible advancements in AI. The world of technology is constantly evolving and generative AI is at the forefront of this transformation. I'm sure you'll all agree that with ChatGPT, it has become a household name. From creating realistic content, text, images, videos, to understanding natural language conversation, AI is changing the way we interact with technology. One of the most exciting applications of AI is understanding and impacting how businesses interact with their consumers so that they can enable search and discovery of their valuable products, services, and content by really getting the intent of the consumer. This is something we at Algolia, where we serve one out of every six searches on internet are deeply passionate about. The future of AI is incredibly exciting. And today I am excited to put the ever so present generative AI around all of us, along with innovative AI search product, Neural Search into a fun and meaningful use. Let's see how we can use this combination to start an entrepreneurial journey. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. My name is Abhijit Mehta. I am the director of product for Algolia Search. My team builds AI search products here to ensure continual improvement of search and discovery on the internet. And I'm really hopeful that you are as excited as I am after the keynote sessions from Bernadette and Bharat. Let's now take a step further and put some of these into actions. All right, let's level set on something. Consumer behavior is changing. For decades, we were trained to mold our natural way of expression to fit whatever computer can understand. How many of you have typed sustainable plus coffee plus mugs in the search bar trying to match your ask to something that is present um, in the product catalog? That's no longer the case. If you and I today want to go and type uh, hold my coffee hot or hold my hot coffee, it should be understood. The move from matching to understanding is happening and it's happening now. If you run a business, you don't want to be left behind. That's why we launched Algolia Neural Search. And I'm going to take a few minutes to explain what it is all about. Let's say you sell shoes and chairs. When you want to represent a piece of information, let's take some products, for example, we would do it in the form of a set of attributes that can be associated with that product. This can be in a tabular form or in a JSON object, doesn't really matter. The underlying principles are same deterministic data points about that product or an item. This makes finding the product by matching these attributes of the ask a relatively job, a easier job. But when it comes to natural understanding, the approach will need to change. As an example, one can't simply query this data for high, high quality leather products. If that were to work, how would it work? Let's look at some of the basics. Think of each attribute as pro of the product as dimensions. Price and rating, for examples, are two different dimensions. If you now plot the products on, let's say, the dimensions of rating, these products will be a vector somewhere in this spectrum. The farthest towards the top is highest rated product. Products closer to each other in this dimension are similarly rated. You see, the language has started to change. We are no longer talking about an exact measure. We are talking about highly rated or similarly rated. Great, we are getting somewhere. We are getting to better understanding and meaning of data. Let's add another dimension to it. Let's call it category. By the virtue of these two dimensions now, these products are not similar at all. The chair on the right top is not a highly rated shoe, nor a low rated chair. In reality, products have multiple dimensions. It's not just one or two or 10. We would be dealing with hundreds and thousands. And to make it even more complex, the way we talk about this adds to further complexity. If I want to say top rated versus high rated, that should be understood. So those are added dimensions, added complexity. How will it all work with such complexity? Let's see the basic math behind this. This slide shows how is similarity determined. Continuing on the example of two dimensional space we plotted our products on, we use cosine as the measure of similarity. Cosine determines how are two entities related or unrelated. If two objects are 180 degrees apart, cosine of 180 degrees, that is minus one, implies that they are opposite. Example, top and bottom would maybe they are 180 degrees apart in a language space. Similarly, if two items are orthogonal, that is at 90 degree, the cosine says zero, which means they are 
they are unrelated. If they're exactly on the same line, same spot, they will be same. The cosine will say one. In reality, it will be a number within this spectrum. The closer the number of cosine between these two items, they'll be treated as similar items. So if we go back to our two dimensional data representation and add a third dimension of brand into the equation, maybe this will, this will make a lot more sense where uh, the, the two chairs are closer to each other, implying they are similar products. Let's keep adding all relevant dimensions. Let's add all the information we know about the products and let's add more dimensions of the natural language, the way things are spoken of into this. Very soon, this third dimension, three dimension space will transform into a high dimensional space. But we will ha have a lot more confidence on finding similar products there using the same basic principle of cosine similarity. Items grouped together in this high dimensional space are similar. As a side note, the application of large language models that you have heard powering multiple applications like ChatGPT is what makes populating the products in high dimensional space possible. So if you he hear about large language models, vector space, similarity, sp similarity search, remember this picture. All good stuff, right? Well, not that easy. Remember that picture again. If you take a step back and you were to plot the term vector search in a similar space, you will actually find that this is nowhere closer to the words easy, simple, fast, cost effective. Hope you got the pun. Um, coming back to the point, while this is very useful, the complexity and the hugeness is, makes it not practical. This is the reason why that vectors, while they've existed for almost a decade, have not become accessible to masses. It's not practical to operate at scale due to time and cost factors. We have changed that. Through our innovative neural hashing, we are democratizing the vector search technology to all. Through an adoptive machine learning model, we create hashes of vector, the vector's representation of these products, so that we can achieve 99% accuracy of searching and storing and finding similarity at 10% of the cost, all at the same blazing fast retrieval speed that Algolia is known for. No one else out there has achieved this. But vector search is not what all that neural search is about. There is more. Remember, matching is great for cases when the ask is deterministic and specific. So keyword works really, really good for the top popular queries. We don't want to lose that benefit. And remember how we made vector search scalable and practical? This has allowed us to run both keyword and vector search for every single query bringing the best of both worlds, matching and understanding. Remember, for every single query, matching and understanding is what Algolia Neural Search is. Very excited to see what you all build with this amazing technology in future. But today, I'm not just excited about the technology. I want to take this and as mentioned at the start of the session, combine with some of the generative AI tools and products out there and put an idea into action. Let's get going. In the next five minutes, we are actually going to launch a new business, something real, where you can go and buy products and you can make some real money. Okay, well, I'm, I may have lied a little. Maybe we will not actually create the entire business in five minutes, but if you actually look at this recording, use it as a guide and follow along. It might take maybe two days, but you'll be able to launch a real business for sure. To fit the content in the next five minutes, I've actually done most of the work in the background. And I say two days because whatever may come, Let's not forget to exercise our right to snooze and take breaks. All right, so the first tip, narrow down to an idea. The first generative AI tool to look at is one that's pretty common today, ChatGPT. Go ahead, provide it, provide it the prompts expressing your passion, maybe just interest, provide it constraints of how much money you want to spend, um, who you want to target, who the customers are, which country, region, give as much inputs as possible. Then ask it to share top five ideas. Ask it to generate SEO optimized descriptions of products, categories, pages, etc. I recommend repeating and refining until you get to the idea that you feel really excited about. For this demo, we narrowed it down to sustainable and aesthetic, aesthetically pleasing home products. We named the company Kuwasu. The name was also generated with the help of ChatGPT. This was a case of generating an idea from scratch. But if you have already something already going on, start there. Before we go further, let's create the AI stack, a blueprint of how we will create this business. What you will see now is a functional architecture, which I have called here as AI stack. Remember, this is not all AI. We are not going to use AI just for the sake of it. 
but most of the tools used here are AI and that's why it's called AI stack. What's the first thing you need to start a business? Any guesses? Products, you need products, right? So once you have products, you need customers. And then finally, you need to connect the customers to the products by enabling search and discovery of your products in a way that, that, is, that makes the best experience to your customers. You never want them going empty handed, at least not because they were not understood. So you have to ensure that the customers are understood. And remember, we talked about uh, moving from matching to understanding is happening now. You don't want to miss on that. Finally, to bring this all together, you need a customer facing interfa interface. This could be an app or a website. This app or website should have a store, maybe reviews, definitely payments, and some mechanism to interact and communicate with customers. Perfect, now you have the blueprint. Let's fill in these boxes with some products that you could use. I'll start from the top. The top is a Shopify store integrated with Stripe for payments and Twilio for customer engagement. I won't, a lot of, I won't spend a lot of time here. You can find plenty of document out there. Next, to get your products, you have multiple options. I will talk about two approaches. Next, to get your products, you have multiple options. I'll talk about two approaches. First option, you use the AI tool browse.ai to scrape products that fits your category of exciting ideas. This will scrape the data and you can have this in the required format. Let's say you get a CSV extract. You should now create an Amazon associate account and have your affiliate link. You will link this affiliate link to the product data that you just scraped and you can earn commissions when these products here. Option two, you can connect your Shopify store to the vendors available directly on the platform or even use a drop shipping app. This will probably be a quickest way to get started. So I recommend getting started there. Moving to the rightmost box, you need to get your customer. So the tools available to you are ChatGPT for generative for generating product descriptions that are SEO friendly, social campaign wordings, etc. You can also use Canva AI for this. Adobe Firefly for powerful images to help you with your campaigns. Use the combination of these to add to run ads on Google, on your social account, WhatsApp, face, Facebook groups, whatever, wherever you can get in front of people. It could very well be your local community. Um, go ahead and share it with them. Awesome, now with these both sorted, all you need now is to enable search and discovery for your products with the customers. Leverage the power of Algolia Neural Search for understanding your customers. You will plug in your product catalog on the Shopify store to Algolia through out of box Algolia Shopify connector. With all this done, you are set to go. Let me show you the outcome of this work in action. Let's start with a prayer to the demo gods that things work properly. Let's first have a look at the Shopify store. You can see that I have already added products using the techniques we discussed earlier to the Shopify store. Next, you should plug this data into an Algolia index. This would require you to create an Algolia account before doing this step. There are multiple settings to tweak, but the simplest and the essential ones are to point your Shopify store to an Algolia index. You will need to provide necessary credentials, but that's about it. You should be able to, you should actually enable click analytics. Clickstream data is what powers neural search. It's the fuel of its brain, so don't forget enabling that. Once done, press save to initiate the data synchronization. Once that is done, you will be able to see this data in Algolia. At this point, you should go ahead and activate neural search. I have already do done this to save us some time. And that's it. Now your website is ready to go. Remember, you would have already changed the Shopify store's product descriptions, category descriptions, landing images, etc., with the content generated in the step earlier, uh, using the product in the customer box. So with all this done, I was actually able to launch this over just just in the weekend. So in fact, less than two days. I wasn't totally lying, you see. Let's see this in action. Tom, the Gen Z young man who cares about environment, goes and asks for sustainable coffee cup. And there you go. He can see these options right there. You will notice that none of the product descriptions actually have sustainable word in that. This understanding came from neural search. Neural search is now active on your website to make sure your customers like Tom are understood. Next. Gina, a similarly responsible lady, goes and asks for something to hold and keep the coffee hot. She gets all the relevant results to choose from. Amazing. Let me highlight something really exciting. If you were in the UK, just like me, and have launched Kuwasu, you want to expand your company internationally. 
Let's take Europe and Middle East, for example. While it's, while it's easy to launch a basic translated website version of the content, which I will not focus on now, the content translation won't help in understanding and searching in those languages. Thanks to neural search, without any additional effort, you can serve customers by enabling them query in 50 plus languages and get highly relevant results. Let's look at some examples. I will take the same query as Gina, i.e. hold hot coffee and query it in Spanish, Italian, Arabic, and Romanian. Let's see how these results look like in Spanish. Well, looks good. Let's try Italian. That looks good to me. And what about Arabic? That's pretty good too, right? Boom, no extra effort and 50 plus languages out of the box with natural and semantic understanding. Let me highlight an important thing that you should be aware of. Let's try the same query in Romanian. You might see slightly different results. All are still relevant to the ask though. This can happen. And depending on the nuances of the languages, you might see some variances. The key thing to note though, is that neural search engine is learning to rank with customer interaction. So if a certain product is not clicked at all, it will be pushed down. Similarly, highly clicked and converted products will rise to the top. What you have seen now, just now, is Algolia end-to-end -end AI in action. Better query understanding for the highest recall at retrieval and an adoptive and ever-learning rank-to-learn layer for relevance that gives highest conversion. That's Algolia Neural Search. But things don't end here. Let's say one of your products give you the highest conversion or maybe suddenly a product has become popular because a celebrity were wearing that for a concert or something and you want to control and merchandise these products you can do so. You have full control over this highly converting machine to make it work even better for you. Let's see this in action too. Let's start with searching for phone screen protectors. Let's first look at how people are searching for it. Say they go and type um, protect phone screen and get these results. Amazing, right? Like these are all relevant results. But maybe you, you, you don't want this. Let me first trigger this manual control for which I have created a rule already to save us some time. I'm going to click on this while I talk through the rationale. Okay. Imagine this weekend Rihanna was seen sporting a glittery and shockproof, which she talked about to in the press, iPhone case. High chances that folks might look for it. You want these products to be on the top. Let's go and search for it again. There you go. So now you can be sure that you are catering to the latest trend from yesterday and not missing out on this potentially high conversion sell items. That's the end of my demo. Hope you've enjoyed that. Now take a leap, go ahead, move with your ideas that you have had in your minds forever and put it into action. I hope this was interesting and at least inspired a few of you to go and give this a try. Since you are here, you can get bumped into the wait list to get access to Algolia Neural Search by signing up using the link in the chat. So go ahead and start your entrepreneurial journey. Thank you for listening to me. Feel free to reach out to me and have a good day.